Alrighty, guys, welcome back. Earlier, we were talking about um, uh, ooh, the FSU and ACC <laughs> lawsuit. Um, <laughs> what's going? On? What's going on here? <laughs> Sorry, I, <laughs> I'm a little turned around for a second there. Sorry. Um, so earlier, we were talking about the FSU and ACC lawsuit highlighted by the league's alleged form, forum shopping. And then we were also discussing how the proposed college football super league impacts college basketball's future. And now we're going to be uh, talking about Clay Thompson and um, how he's doing with free agency and what's going on with that. So, all right, now I'm going to tell you. Uh, I had to, I, I ran out real quick because I had a couple friends of mine that's mm -hmm. from Germany that just got in. And so I had to run over and say hello to them. And then Beth, Faith ran out as well. So, <laughs> yeah, it was a quick, <laughs> quick bathroom break for me. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to check my camera too. I'm going to check a different camera, see if it works. Oops. Yes. Okay. Just wanted to see if that was working. Just wanted, may want to do something. <laughs> All right. Okay. Back to this one. <laughs> <laughs> Tate's just messing around over here. Okay. Um, so Clay Thompson um, will prioritize mental health in impending free agency. For most players in the NBA, especially uh, aging journeymen fighting to survive in an uh, uber competitive league, a contract year could be a nerve wracking experience. However, when you're Clay Thompson, you're Warriors royalty and almost assured to be fiscally taken care of by the franchise you helped win four championships. At least that was the assumption made by most insiders covering the Warriors. Years. Then the 2023-24 season happened. Thomas went, Thompson went to the bench for the first time since 2012, causing several analysts to call for the Warriors to trade him before the February 8th tread de deadline. For the first time in his surreal career, there were questions about Thompson's future as a Warrior. It was a feeling he had never experienced through 12 seasons in the Bay. He was no longer Warriors royalty. On the recent episode of the Draymond on Green Show, Thompson attempted admitted that facing adversity in a contract year has changed his outlook towards free agency and his basketball mortality. Um, he commented, I was actually struggling with a lot at the beginning of this year because of the unknown. I might have let contract situations or playing time or making up excuses rather than just appreci appreciating what is in front of me. It took me and Steve Kerr like four real heart to heart talks to finally break my shell, being like, you know what, I've got to have fun this year. I deserve to have fun. The Washington State alumni stressed that the newfound perspective has made him appreciative, his appreciate his limited time in the league and could factor into his free agency decision. Thompson will become a free agent on July 1st, while the Magic are reportedly expected to offer him a ton of money. Other teams such as the Sixers, Jazz, and Hornets are projected to have the most cap space. So, Interesting. Okay. So, when you look at Clay and you start thinking about him, and he's still Golden State uh, royalty. Mm -hmm. uh, he's one of the Splash Brothers. Um, I would like to see Golden State and Clay figure out a way to make have him come back to Golden State. I think that is the best thing for his career as a whole. Sometimes one of the biggest mistakes I think a lot of players make when they get older is the team is starting to change their game is starting to slip and playing time becomes so so much more important to them that they don't think about their legacy they feel like they still have a lot more time left in their career mm -hmm. and so they end up going to another organization where that organization gets a year or two out of them then they kind of toss them away and then it, it spirals out of control from there um i think a guy like Clay should be able should stay with Golden State. He's taken a, a, a step back, but long term, yes, maybe in a contract year, maybe taking maybe a considerable pay cut. That's the that's the hard thing when you're used to faith. If you're making thirty million dollars a year, 
and you know maybe there's an there's there's another someone out there that's willing to pay you 30 million next year to have you come play work with them but to stay where you're at you may have to take half of that mm -hmm. it's a hard thing to do different when you're young but when you look at yourself and you're an older player sometimes the older player will chase the money and just say i'm going for the extra money but when i look at clay i say it's worth more long term for him to mm -hmm. stay in a warrior's uniform for his career than it would be for him to leave and go somewhere else now they were talking about teams that that would be a good fit and they talked about the orlando magic okay that's that's the place that he would go um I just don't see it ending well for him. Mm -hmm. I, I I would not. I would I would not look at Golden. I mean at uh, Clay going to Orlando and saying, "Not at Clay's in Orlando. Orlando's a championship contending team." Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. No. The Seventy Sixers, though, that is an interesting team because Clay could go to the Seventy Sixers. He would fit in really well with Joel and Embiid as far as being able to space the floor out because he's such a great shooter. Uh, it allows Joel Embiid to still do, do Joel Embiid things, which he may be the best player in basketball. He's mm -hmm. one of the best players in basketball when healthy. Yeah. Uh, this year's you know, our reigning MVP, he won't be MVP this year, won't even qualify because he didn't play enough games, but he is one of the, one of the best players in the league and having a guy like Clay who could, could space the floor out three and D type player, even though his defense may not be where it used to be, he is still a premier defender and a great shooter uh, and fits in well. But ultimately, the best place for him, I think, is to stay in Golden State. Too many players make that mistake and say, I'm going to go somewhere else where the grass is greener. I mean, I, I look at I look at like uh, Daz Bryant with the Cowboys or Ezekiel Elliott with the Cowboys where Daz was like, I'm not going to take a pay cut and I'm going to go somewhere else. Daz would have had a much better end to his career if he would have taken the pay cut and stayed in Dallas because it ended up being a disaster for him. Uh, sometimes teams just need to, sometimes players got to look at the overall big picture. If he stays his whole career with Steph and him, whenever they, whenever they talk about uh, the Splash Brothers. They're always bringing them two back together. The Warriors championship years. Uh, being a megastar in the Bay Area can last for decades to come after the game. And so that's kind of the way I look at it for, uh, for Steph is what's the best thing for Steph long term? And I say staying with Golden State. Unless you got a surefire team that's going to say hey we're going to invest in you long term we're going to give you a, a, a long term contract max dollars and you're we're going to contend we're going to make a run at the championship uh i think about like charles barkley his last few years in portland and things of that nature it was a bad decision it, it, mm -hmm. it doesn't it's more important for an older player to stay with the team that he's known for, I think, long term than short term. So what do you think? Um I don't <laughs> I don't know. Um... <laughs> <laughs> you you know what I mean? It's kind of like I mean he's been there what, since two thousand twelve? Is that what that's yes. been? he's been with the Warriors since two thousand twelve and now all of a sudden he may not be with them anymore and he's yes how it many is, it's more years like, does he have before he retires players that's the thing players sometimes are the last ones to know that their career is on the downslide i think mm -hmm. clay is a little bit more self-aware 
and he kind of realized, hey, I'm not, I, I need to not, I need to come off the bench. Yeah. Also, the fact is, you've come off of two massive injuries, and now you're you you come back and you're not the same player anymore. Mm -hmm. In a contract year, just mentally, it's a hard thing to be like. Ooh, I got to have a big year this year. It's important that I have a big year because I want to be able to stay in, in at Golden State. I want to get a big contract and I want to do this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. And then you start playing and you're not playing as well as you were hoping to. And so it becomes a mental thing. I need to play better. I need to play better. So you start pressing. When you start pressing, your game is in trouble. Mm -hmm. And so you get you start to slide and it's costly as well. And I've heard people say when you talk about Clay, maybe the thing that Clay needs most is a change of scenery. And a change of scenery scenery could inject some energy into his into his game. But long term, I look at it as where should he be? for long-term stability uh, to be, he's a warrior in everyone's mind, Golden State warrior. And I would hate to see him leave. You know, you you when you start thinking about this, this championship dynasty of the warriors, you think Steph, Clay, Draymond. It's, I would like to see the warriors keep them together. It's kind of like, Magic, Kareem, and Worthy. Uh, you look at the Bulls, and it's like Pippen going and playing for, I think it was Houston or Portland. I can't remember where he went to. It didn't end well for them. They had a decent team, but it doesn't. I don't think it ends well for them. So, mm. so uh, yes. you feel he should stay with the Warriors and just yes, I, 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 I really do. Mm. I, I would, I think. You understand what I mean? It's the grass isn't always greener. Mm -hmm. You're there's a difference between you're our homegrown guy and you're the guy that we just brought in as a hired gun. Mm -hmm. The loyalty from the the loyalty from the organization is not the same. Mm -hmm. The minute they look at you and you're like, oh, your game, his his game isn't what we thought it was gonna be. They're not gonna. They they're not gonna look at you and say, "Hey, he's one of our guys." It's like he's a piece. We got to mm -hmm. get rid of him. We gotta we gotta move on from him. We gotta send him to the bench. People don't care, you know, about your feelings any longer. Right. But when you're that homegrown talent, it's a you know it's a delicate conversation. We gotta we gotta take it. We consider not only what's best for the team, but what's best for Clay because. He's family. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why I look at it and it's just like, it's the right move. Yeah. So, all right. Well, all right, guys. Well, with that, we are going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to dive into our Thirsty Thursday segment. So make sure you guys stick around and we'll be back in a minute. 